Just get ready to pull up a chair. Come on, I'll move my guard here. Come on up to the table. Thank you. You came just in time for our public comment period. So would you like to introduce yourself and make a brief public comment? Hi, I'm Sue Cope. I live in town. And how do you spell your last name? C-O-P-E. Um, I am here because I have a special interest, but I also would like just to sit in on the meeting sure. because I've been on boards. And I hate it when somebody shows up and says, I have an idea and I haven't even been to one of your meetings before. <laughs> and I would like to commend the committee on all the work that I see going on around town with new trees because I walk a lot and I appreciate just ran in, sorry. Yeah, sure, I know, those flights of stairs are kind of rude. Um, so I see new trees a lot, and uh, I appreciate them. And my interest is in um, potential plantings for the Spring Grove Cemetery. That's what my interest is, but I would like to know more about what you're doing, because you probably have some other projects lined up, in and addition to the things that I see. And can you tell us your address? I'm at Jewett Street. Jewett Street. 14th, oh, OK. Between Forbes and Gordon. Yeah. Come to the high school. A lot of new trees in our area. Great. Well, thanks for coming. You're welcome to stay to the home meeting if you want. Okay. Um, we try to wrap these up in about an hour and a half. That's our goal. Um, okay. Before before we um, approve the minutes from last meeting, I'm going to make a request as the chair um, because I invited Molly to this meeting and forgot to put it on the agenda, and I wanted I want to amend the agenda. Um, so that we can have Molly have some time here. So my suggestion would be, um, I don't think either the topic of volcano mulching or tree speak take five minutes each. Um, so I would like to amend those to two minutes each and, and make a slot after tree warden report for um, Molly. But I can't make a motion. I make a motion to amend the agenda accordingly so that we can um, make room for Molly. Second. Molly with an I. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. That's what we'll do then. Um, Sue, so do you mind passing me that pen? Thank you. All right. So now we're going to go back to um, approving the minutes from the last meeting. Um, do we want to make the Molly with an IE correction? I think there is well. one Molly with an IE spot. Um, where Molly Freilisher is referenced, I think. Are you talking about under significant tree ordinance, page two? Mm, no, I don't think so. Let's see. Um, I'm both ways under oh, community okay. forestry grant. Oh, there you are. Oh. Hi, there is one. It's page three. Okay. Well, it's just an easy way of distinguishing which Molly we're talking about. Oh, I see. About. Oh. Okay, under page under the fourth bullet. Page three. Under the fourth yeah. bullet. Okay, so do you see that? Okay, page three yeah. under DCR forestry grant. Yeah, Molly. The fourth right. bullet. That Molly, Molly should be DCR. And that's always Molly. That's how you can tell us apart. Thank goodness for that. So it's right here. And that should be that's IE, it. and that's this Molly. So this is Molly Fraser. She's our Okay, that's forestry. that one up there. That one is that Molly, I believe. But this should be me. This is me also. This, yeah, this is not, this is not Molly. Yeah. Yeah. This was actually, I was recording oh, okay. at Molly. Okay. <laughs> All right. You guys need to get this sorted out before the meeting. <laughs> hey, I read them before the meeting. How was you to approve? Yeah. <laughs> well, I did read it before the meeting, so I can second that. All right. I skimmed. They're good. They're good. And I wanted to commend yeah. that. They're really good. They were what you want? Yes. Okay. Yes. Much more readable. Oh, okay. Okay. So um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Meetings, minutes have been approved from last week. Chair report. There is a um, card going around to thank Jay for his service on the commission. I made it a month ago and kept forgetting to bring it to the meeting. So make sure you sign it. Um, so that's that. The other is that you may have noticed that Cooley Dickinson has done its own set of plantings. Mm -hmm. Rich, have you noticed? Oh, Trees yeah. and so oh, forth? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. All right. So, um, I mean, that. to comment now or later? You can comment now, very briefly. Uh, so the deal is, is that uh, they actually were technically supposed to go in front of the planning board for that because of the, of the original site plan approval from the 1990s. Um, requires any change requires any changes that happen to that particular area because it is actually there was some kind of a land swap that happened there so there was people from the planning board so Carolyn Mission I have in contact with John John forwarded the plans like the day after they cut down all the shrubs we looked at them we you know, basically told them they looked fine with the exception of the didn't care for the red maples, mm -hmm. but he, you know, said that we already had, they had already bought all the plant materials on site. Whatever. So, was your objection that we have too many plant, uh, red maples in town? And we yeah, we have too many red maples, and I, you know, I, I, there's I think five or six of them in there now. Mm -hmm. Plus, there was other ones from the existing project. So, I, you know, I'm just trying to discourage. Mm -hmm. And that was a, you know, it's a nice, it's a nice plan. It was put together by a landscape architect, but they just keep. Sticking red maples in there, and then the other thing too is that I didn't get a chance to inspect the plantings, and I don't because the agreement that they had in the '90s doesn't specify that the tree warden would be doing that. Right? So my assumption is that they left the wire baskets on. Planted to them. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not. It is what it is. So I'm still pursuing the other issue of planting in front of there in the public right of way. Right. So we have right. Shade trees. And trying to work with Bridge to get those wires put in the ground. Okay. Have heard back. And what about the other section, like in uh, on the lo more of the local street side? I, we, that really, I, have, I don't have a plan for that. I didn't see a plan. The only plan that he provided us with, was with that immediate area in the parking lot, which I think was a concern of uh, the hospitals to begin with because they didn't like the old growth that was there. Yeah. So, I mean, it does look better, I think, uh, but I'm just wrong, wrong tree species. Are the same ones at the hospital who approved that the ones we've been working with, or did it come from uh, a different? No, it I don't know who it came from at the hospital, but the gentleman that we dealt with, John, who was in charge of the you know, the overall grounds and building, I'm sure they were generated through him. But I'm sure there was another board of some sort that approved the final expenditures of the monies. It's probably kind of personally probably a low kind of a low cost yeah. work yeah. to be with. Yeah. Okay. All right, and the last report uh, item on my report is that I was um, reached out by a land use planner through the Franklin County, I can't remember what it was, CDC or something. Anyway, um, asking to, to learn everything he could from us about, um, about tree planting, because he, it was his job to, to suggest planting plans for the municipalities of Greenfield and Montague. And so I immediately came in touch with Molly because it sounded like there was no, I'm gonna pass this on. Yep. Um, like they were stepping several steps ahead. They, uh, from what I, what I guess, there's no tree inventory, there's no tree commission, and I wasn't sure about a tree warden. So I punted him over to you. Yeah, so that's a DCR. Right. Um, through yes. DEA, that they got. Oh, that they got the Yeah, grant? so they're working with DCR. Oh, I um, see. And so there are two coordinators, one from North Berkshire and then this person. This person. Who okay. are both doing the same thing, except UMass is doing the plan for the Berkshire. I see. I see. So, okay. So two people have been in touch with Trino Panton about this as well. Brent is the Franklin County plan. Just okay. Is that Wendy um, uh, Melissa. Melissa. Okay. And then another gentleman got in touch with me today from Montague. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well I keep punting him to Molly. Molly, you can punch him back to us if you want, but it seemed to me like there were at least from what the little information he provided what I gathered was, was that they were jumping ahead a little bit <laughs> beyond what you know, we were schooled to do first before we get to the planting plan. Yeah. Um, they have to come out and report Okay. <laughs> All right. I understand. They have to go out and report I'll tell you the story. Is this story. political? No, no, no. Okay. Um, but 
but all right that's that's that, fine i appreciate you uh, sure sure um i always try to send people your way Molly. um okay so that's it for the chair report so yesterday we had um, about 15 folks that uh, were from the Tree Wardens and Foresters Association in Massachusetts uh, participated in a planting professional development series on proper tree planting that was held at Florence Civic Center. Um, it was attended by tree wardens and also just public works folks, which was nice to see because it was actually public works people other than someone who may be a professional artist actually doing the work. So I think that they got a lot out of it. Um, it was hosted um, by the speakers were Dave Lefcourt and Rick Harper. So Dave Lefcourt is not my counterpart in Cambridge, who's uh, been, uh, I think it was three more in a year, two more in a year last year. Worked for Cambridge for the last 11 or 12 years. Uh, and Rick Harper, I think we've all, everyone here has met him. It was, it was a good program we planted. We ended up going out in the field and planting three trees, two in the public right away on Park Street, uh, one on Park Street, one on Meadow Street, and then one inside the cemetery. So. What was the occasion, Rich? Professional development series mm -hmm. that the Tree Wardens and Foresters Association puts on. There's been different ones. This one I think they wanted to try to do out here uh, to see if they could actually get more folks from Western Mass, but I think that really worked out too well. We'll see Eastern Mass, but I think they're going to do another one in the spring. So, uh, let's see. I think everything else that I wanted to talk about. Yeah, I don't really have. Um, the only thing I want to tell you is that possibly by the end of the month, I might be no longer the Iowa superintendent and the full time superintendent of something. I'm not really sure what the title is. It's really long. I have to figure it out. But it's just going to be forestry parks and cemetery. So they're done doing the renovations at the cemetery building so I can move from the highway department. Um, and then uh, I think they're just trying to find a replacement for the person for the other part of my job. So, but uh, yeah, that's it. So we're, we're, we're plugging away. I'm kind of transitioning. So I send all the yeah. potholes and complaints. Mm -hmm. Somebody else Had wants. I shared this news with you, Molly? Uh, Richard. Richard. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. It's kind of a big deal, huh? Yeah. Well, yeah. what favorable on our application? I don't know about that. <laughs> Depends if we can come through it all the stuff we said we're going to do. But, but, no, I think it's going to be good. I'm looking forward to it. And the more I think about it, the, the more excited I am. Um, it's going to give me a lot more latitude, and it's going to give me the ability to really concentrate on some more on-the-ground type things than I have been able to. So it's going to be good for me professionally and personally. Plus, it's going to be good for the mission of this commission and the mission of the mayor's kind of set this on. So I'm excited. What's the status of cemeteries as far as public locations to plant public shade trees? So planting inside a cemetery is not a public shade tree. Planting within the public right away outside the cemetery would be a public shade tree. So they would just be city trees inside the cemetery. We've done in the past is we have uh, as we have removed trees we have replanted them and especially in spring grove um, bridge street I, I plant when i was the foreman there the parks cemetery foreman i planted i don't know probably eight to ten trees in bridge street but it was kind of it was hard because of the fact that there was a, such a i had to pour through all these old maps to find out where the old trees used to be and i tried to situate them in the same places so i wasn't taking any very little spaces so um, I think with the fact that we're going to be moving over there, we're going to be doing some landscaping work there to kind of clean the existing maintenance area up. And potentially there might be another building built there, so we're going to have to provide some kind of a screen. So there'll be a lot more plantings going on there. Um, I don't know if that answers your question or not. I was just picturing, you know, like, um, what's that big cemetery? Um, people go bird watching in Eastern Mass. Not all yeah, not all. Yeah, it's like a park beautiful big shade trees yeah. and people stroll through. It has, it, I mean, it has it, you know, it has a beautiful row of trees that was planted. I don't know, probably some of the trees have got to be almost 100 years old. Uh, there's a big, there's, uh, there's a lot of nice specimen trees in there. Mm -hmm. um, but as trees, the tree mortality has happened, we've tried to replace them. But of course, now we have actually a plan and we have actually a guide to go by, so it'll be a little, it'll be a little different. But, mm -hmm. 
That does have a beautiful arching canopy when you first drive in there in the main road. So it is, it's, it's different than, uh, than uh, Birch Street. Birch Street has a lot of different trees, but it doesn't have like the overarching canopy. They're kind of more here, there, and mm -hmm. everywhere. But at one time, I think it did, if you look at all the mm -hmm. uh, old uh, mm -hmm. photos. Yes, sir. How does your job title, if at all, change the budget in terms of where our tree planting money is allocated? Is it all just within EBW as a whole, or were there subsets per division? Uh, what the director and I have done so far is that we've worked on actually drawing the positions out of the streets division of the general highway budget. So those people will be moved and positions will be moved, and vacancies will be moved to the parks and make with the parks and cemetery or forestry parks and cemetery budget and then the monies that were allocated will actually just come out of that particular budget uh, for the vehicle maintenance for um, safety training for uh, tools for everything we need in regards to forestry plus we'll end up taking the fifty thousand uh, dollars that we get every year to plant trees out of that budget and go into this other line item so it's a couple we the director and uh, some of the staff did uh, a bunch of analysis, uh, went back like three years to figure out how much money we've actually spent on forestry, uh, including personal services, including overtime, including storm damage, to try to get an accurate reflection um, and try to move those funds over so we're actually kind of close uh, as to where we were. If we, because the general highway budget is huge. And we're, you know, everything we're doing, I gave my salary that comes out of there, and it's not, it's not really truly defined, um, but it will be a lot more defined now that it's in this other budget. So I think it'll be fine. And it doesn't impact the uh, capital planning process either? No. No, as a matter of fact, I think actually what it's going to end up doing is it's going to probably bolster that in a sense because I'll be able to concentrate more on that versus, you know, because I'll have three capital plan projects in a sense will be the, the forestry, the cemetery, which is actually in progress at the moment, um, and then parks improvements, which, you know, the last capital parks improvement was Lawrence Fields. But that doesn't mean that we couldn't actually apply for some land grant monies or some sort of grant monies for other park renovations done in, in the future. So, which will include all kinds of green infrastructure. So I think it's kind of a win-win. The other thing too that's important is that I'm going to also be a signer on all the permits. So getting back to our permitting process, we were, we were going to actually have a tree impact permit. Um, we're going to incorporate, so we, we need to sit down and draft that language and that's going to get stuffed right into a trench permit, stuffed into a driveway permit. And I'll be the fourth signer right now. There's three people, the three divisions sign off and I'll be the fourth. So I'll still have that. Um, they'll still have to get through me, uh, which actually is, which is good because that way there I can actually check on all these driveways and everything else. So, good. Good. All right. I'm gonna keep moving us yeah. along here. All right, um, Molly, would you like to take a moment and share with us what's happening <coughs> at the state level? Sure. So this fall is filling up quite a lot. Um, so it's our grant season, as you know. Um, and we have gotten, I think, more intents to apply than we've ever gotten. Yeah, Mid-20s. <laughs> um, so this will be a competitive round. Um, and if you want me to touch on that grant. Yeah, that, absolutely. Um, yeah, we, no, no, we can go ahead and flip those. OK. Um, I, don't, I don't have much except it looks, and I have other DCR stuff. OK, good. Uh, so I'll go back to the grant. Um, so tree store training is next week. This is our two-day session that we're going to come to. Mm -hmm. um, so do you probably know Jen is coming? Jen Warner? Did you know? She's coming. Oh, oh great. Yeah. Um, so she'll be there. Yeah. And we also yeah. have pretty good attendance for that. Um, we'll have over 30 people. Um, so that's great. And this is also Tree City application time. Um, great for our board. Um, so those are due December 31st. And then there are several workshops coming up um, that are in the planning phase right now, including a couple on roadside tree mortality. Um, 
that Northampton is probably in better shape since you have an inventory. Um, but those will be later this month in November. I'm sure you'll hear about those. Um, some parts around Rhode Island, around Douglas, um, have pretty heavy tree mortality, which is not the drought. Towns are wondering what they should be doing to address that. So these workshops are going to touch on that, and we're partnering with uh, National Grid. Huh? Where is the tree mortality? Sorry? Tree mortality workshop. Uh, one will be in Hopedale uh, at National Grid on October 26th, and the other one will be I think November 16th in Worcester. Is it in the Citizen Forester? Not yet, because it's still <laughs> up there. Um, but we are working with National Grid, because this is, of course, a major concern for them. And these are huge dead oak trees in the right away. So keep your eye out for that. It will be in the Citizen Forester. Um, and then there are two iTree programs, uh, workshops that are going to be coming. One physical workshop somewhere in Eastern Mass sometime in November. Um, literally just started this today. Um, working with Davy Tree on that. And then there will also be an iTree Academy that will be an online class um, that will start and will cover most of the programs and the project. And look for all of those in the Citizen Forester. Um, and speaking of the newsletter, if you ever want to share what you're doing mm -hmm. or anything, feel free to send me those pictures. Um, happy, yeah. happy to. Uh, I'll, I'll take any. <laughs> um, even even just a picture. Um, and also, maybe some of you have seen we have our poster contest theme. Trees mm -hmm. have mass appeal. Uh, we're very early on this. The deadline is March 15th. Mm -hmm. um, fifth grade students can homeschool. All, all fifth graders can participate. Um, and so back, circling back to grants. Um, and I just want to say, stepping back totally, you know, the communities are noticing what's happening in Northampton. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think some of all the interest, and certainly some of the calls I get, um, are from communities. We want that. So you guys Yay, thanks for that. Doing sure are. amazing things here. So we should be very proud. Um, and one of those amazing things is this project. Um, so I, I didn't really have any particular comments um, on the, the grant uh, intent. Um, you know, I think we liked that it was a mix of the sea trees and just traditional trees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think just, you know, following having the map and checking all those boxes. Yeah. Yeah, it's really all I can say because so much thought has gone into it already. It's very possible that um, the match will be quite a bit higher <laughs> than we, because we realize that there's a cost involved in putting the hardscape back mm -hmm. that we hadn't factored in. And then the original quote we got for the CU soil may have been a little bit under, right? Because we originally had it at $60 per cubic yard. And That's $60 per cubic yard installed. Installed. Installed at that rate because of the, they only had 44 cubic yards. And then you got a later quote that was quite a bit. That's not installed. That's actually for us to. So this oh, is, this so is it's my, even more. This is my take on this. Is what happened, and I can't get to the bottom of it. But the structural soil that went in on Pleasant Street is actually not CO soil. So CO soil has a set. You know, the, the actual uh, company that makes it in New York um, does not. You know, they sell it to the, the vendors. Sell it, and the vendors actually kind of create their own price scheme. So the price that I got was seventy five dollars picked up. So if we actually drove to go get it to go pick it up and stockpile it somewhere in the parking lot most likely to cover it, then we would actually have the available for us to use. So I think there'll be some wiggle room. I think once we actually figure out the amount of the uh the sold in tons or the amount of yards that we actually really need and what we actually can fit in there and how much hardscape we have to take out, we'll have definitely some harder numbers which we would need to provide. Uh, in the actual uh, application, so we have a little bit of work to do this month. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, generally, the more specific you can be. Yeah. Sure. No, this. Thank you. Thanks for sticking around. Um, all right, so I'm going to back up a little bit and go to um, the I item I skipped over, which was the significant tree ordinance. Todd, do you have an update on that? Don't. Uh, I, I, I do. Yeah. So I got. So after um, I emailed Carolyn Mish, uh, the what Todd had forwarded me uh, from the conversation and motion in the last meeting. So Carolyn um, responded, she said, uh, see attached, I incorporated more specifics about the threshold for exemptions as requested by the committee. This definitely makes it more clear. I also added a bullet to the site plan submit a portion of the amendment that states we want to see all trees, not just significant trees, on abutting properties when their root zones extend the property being considered for planning board approval. Okay. So this has to uh, do with the controversy that's erupted around the project office. Of South Olive. Um, she said, I didn't add third party energy standard on purpose because we don't want to call out any one proprietary reviewer uh, over another, and we hadn't done that in other parts of the zoning. Um, the building code review requires the energy analysis, so we'll definitely be able to check that. So, as far as the net zero goes, that actually resides in the building part, it's not going to be in the, in the zoning ordinance. Um, that's how they're. And so do we need to know how they evaluate net zero energy? I mean, someone's got to be... have a term in the zoning ordinance that needs to be defined in the zoning ordinance, unless it's defined in the building code and it's referenced as defined in the code. So I don't think that's... So uh, she said she sent it to the mayor, we'll let you know uh, when he wants to move it to a council agenda. That's where it sits. I can forward you all this email. I can forward to you, Doug, but that's the update that I have. So it does, it, should, it is cleaned up. So uh, let's see the changes are. Uh, I can read them to you if you like. If you don't want me to read them to you, it's up to you. Um, what are you reading? The, the changes. Or do you not need this? Do not need to? No, I think it'd be great. Can we, instead of reading it, could you um, forward it to yeah. us? I'm forward it to you, but I think the comment period at this point is probably over. The comment, the mayor has these comments at this point, and he will decide. Probably wants to do one of them. And I will meet with, hopefully, meet with me and Kim, Carolyn, and the mayor at some point, unless they don't feel like I need to. So but I'll forward you the draft again. Comments by the committee? Well, my, my, my recommendation would be that the term is defined in the zoning ordinance if it's used in the zoning ordinance and or it references the definition in the city or state building code. Because it's problematic just to rely on the building permit because building permits come after this process and after the trees so are approved for so the way that she worded it is uh, number six. Upon approval of planning board, trees that are removed in order to create net zero for electric use, energy buildings of up to 10,000 square feet, building square footage shall apply to a single building footprint or aggregate of several buildings. In order to qualify for this exemption, applicants must present a building permit that has been issued for specific plans showing compliance with this standard and must construct in accordance with the site plan within one year of pulling a building permit. Exemptions within this provision is only allowed for the trees necessary to be removed in order to provide the solar access to the building or buildings. Yeah, but with, is the building the building commissioner is not going to issue a building permit for a building that's not approved by the for a lot that's not approved by the planning commission? That's, I don't, I don't mm -hmm. maybe maybe there's a magic loophole here, but the building commissioner so won't approve a building permit, that's correct, before that's right. the planning. So they're asking for something that's impossible. That's a good question. If they're going for it, why are they going to the planning board? 
because you can actually you can actually go through site plan and so they can act. It seems to me, from what I'm reading on my stance, they can actually approve the site plan approval. Um, but in order to actually qualify for this exemption, so you can, for example, uh, you can have a multi, you can have a large parcel that's divided up for a certain building lots and already be approved by the planning board. But when you go to pull your permit, in order to get this exemption, you must show compliance with the net zero standard that must construct in accordance with the site plan. I'm not, I'm not really sure of the loophole is, but this is not my... I don't, I don't think there is. So the exemption is granted subject to, to the... some eventual submittal of the... Uh, right, and they're, they're, they're giving you a year. So, not written that way, but okay. Your explanation is better than what So, you construct in accordance with the site plan within one year of building the pulling the building permit. So if the building permit is not acted upon within a year, then the exemption disappears. Yeah. So they're anticipating site plan approval with a, or whatever approval with a conditioned approval of the tree removal subject to the obtaining a building permit. Yeah, showing the building permit for it. Yes, and it's in compliance with uh, the net zero building code. Which are not defined still. So. Well, well, they are in the building. They are in the building code. 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 Yeah. Uh -huh. So that concept works. It's just, they could use a little tweaking in the language department. And my, it's too late for, for Todd to recommend anything? No, it's not too late. I can you can, I can send this to you and you can say something. I'll send it to Carolyn. And, um, you know, I don't know where it sits in the mayor's. Well, there's no harm in you recommending no. language, and if, I mean, look, it would be easy to take the path of least resistance here, but, the, you know, our whole purpose of being is to protect trees, and, um, and we don't want to inadvertently cause harm when when projects are, are done with great, you know, with good intention but not executed well, and there are loopholes that allow trees to be taken down when, you know, uh, when projects claim to be one thing and then turn out to another. So I think, I think that our, our jobs is still alive here, and I would, I would like to see Todd recommend actual language and, and see whether or not it's considered. And if it's not considered, and Todd, you you continue to have concern that there is um, there's potential for trees to be removed um, that shouldn't, then I think that we should not waive our right to review this when it, um, after what is it uh, was it that the mayor wanted to send it straight to the the um, ordinance committee and then from the ordinance committee goes to the council and then the council will refer to. It. To the would refer back to us would refer back to back to us uh -huh. yeah no i think the, the concept can be the concept is there it just in my opinion it's not very clear in the ordinance language but it's just a matter of playing around with it okay all right i'll send it to you so you'll work on that language and, and send it to the mayor sure okay thank you Everyone comfortable with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. For, yeah, that was yeah. Some time. All right. Um, before we leapfrog too um, too completely over the DCR community forest grant, um, I wanted to just summarize that we got it. We got the letter of intent in. All he has it seems to um, you know be well received. So our next step is going to be to dig down with much greater specificity over what we submitted, Rob, was um, 17, um, 17 possible sites in the parking lot and then 50 possible sites around. So that's going to be our charge. Um, you know, we did kind of a back of the envelope with a tree keeper looking on the ground, but now we, um, 
and you don't really get clear about where those sites are. Um, we also offered up that we would do a workshop that is targeted mostly to professionals in the field on structural soil insulation, um, but then it would be open to the general public. So that's another piece of it. That's the educational component that we're going to want to go on to. Um, and that's kind of exciting because I feel like we could draw some really interesting parties who may not you know, work in that medium at all and could learn a lot from it. Yeah, the only, I think the uh, only thing that I can see that might be a little bit so we really have to dial in on the actual volume of structural soil we need and the actual amount of hardscape that we're actually going to remove. Um, so when you get those numbers together, we may have to balance a few balls in the air to try to make it all work. So the potential may exist and we may not get, we may have to do a smaller mix. We may not be, we may, we may, may not be able to afford um, to do all of it in one year. So we may do it quite a the rest of it, um, but I'm just concerned about the amount of structural soil and the hardscape that we're going to take out. The other thing too is I really would like to have a plan that I could have from engineering. I, I tried to find, there is no plan for that parking lot. The only parking lot, there's no plan. All the other parking lots have plans. An engineering plan that I could actually, you know, doctor up and use. But, so we're going to have to try to see if I can get someone in engineering to recreate one so we can actually call out the individual places um, and have some kind of uh, details in the back to show removing the, you know, what we have to do, remove this, add so much structural soil, the volume, um, keeping the curving, taking the curving out so we can kind of put that all together and present it. Mm -hmm. So I'll be working with some of that engineering and I'll try to get on that next week. Okay. So are we going to maintain having this be a Rob, Marilyn, Lily, and Rich subcommittee for the next month? How are you? Uh, um, We knew that um, we wanted it to be a good demonstration project, and, and uh, I think some, um, I think that I got the message that we're going to confine ourselves to start the soil within the islands themselves and not give up the parking lot. Is that right, Rich? So, I think uh, the other thing, too, that I've heard, I, uh, Nina Basak actually emailed me. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, she's and so I, I, I think she would actually be willing to come out here and actually talk to us. Also. That'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. So she's, she's the, the inventor. Queen of she's the inventor of CSR. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, she's from Cornell. So, but to, an, to answer your question, Rob, that the, answers my question though. Yeah. In the, in the, I don't feel like I can move yeah, yeah. forward not knowing. Okay. Yeah. Good. More than she would have all those answers. Yeah, I mean, I think from a. Uh, after talking to um, Dave Lefkar yesterday, he actually, they did a whole bunch of structural soil projects in Cambridge, mm -hmm. um, and they actually did not rip up any of the roadway. Mm -hmm. They actually um, utilized the existing, I don't know if you think about Main Street, like for example, where the brick pavers are. They basically mm -hmm. took one panel out, took the brick pavers out, excavated a long trench, put mm -hmm. structural soil back in there, uh, constructed the planting sites, and actually put the hardscape back around them with larger tree wells. So that, to me, signaled, and I said, do you have any, uh, you know, did you put any structural soil under the roadway? He said, no. So, you know, he said the average tree life in Cambridge in that environment is 20 to 30 years. Did he, do you know if he followed this, the specifications of the CU soil pamphlet did for not, did square? Not, did not ask him that, but I'm sure that I could actually get some probably some plans from him because everything that they do there is by contractor. Okay. Are they small, medium, or large trees? From what I could see, what they showed in the slideshow, they were large in the okay. end. So when well, you were saying follow the pamphlet, you mean through the soil volumes? Or? Yeah, yeah. You know how there were guidelines. Right. That's I, what I they were going my, my concern is if, if we're trying to follow the pamphlet, it's going to be difficult yeah, to, to do, do anything besides small trees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, well, that's where 
you know, a couple experts might be able to guide us. Right. I don't know. I can e I can email her and ask if she's willing to, to come out here or, or no, no, somehow. It's not a it's not a short job. No, I know, but I unless she's coming out here for something else. But I I did have a long conversation with her many years ago, before I was the true uh, maybe I was the true warden, and uh, she said that they were actually willing to do a demo project here. So well, that would be that, fabulous. That was in Florence, and she said that they would be willing to do it. But I mean, obviously, it takes a lot of coordination. And, but I think that maybe this this mm -hmm. could be that demo project or part of that demo project, and that also could be considered part of the educational component mm -hmm. if she came here. And that would be the day when we actually have, um, you know, like some kind of a field day of some sort. Yeah. Uh, for landscapers, it could be for could be for anyone. I mean, if we were going to, I think if we we're going to do that, that's she was going to be here at that scale, I would actually, uh, I'd like to contact the Tree Wards and Foresters Association and actually get a large group oh, yeah. of uh, tree care professionals and uh, landscapers and engineers. I think that's the other, you know, that's the other market that, that's the other market piece that we kind of have to, you know, we have to get the planning and the engineers because that's where we seem to run into trouble with actually getting mm -hmm. this concept of CU soil and then actually getting it from the concept to the design and then from the design to actually on the ground. Because when they start looking at plans, you know, they're looking they, they start to take things away. So they were supposed to have more to do with soil on Pleasant Street. They were supposed to have uh, stormwater retention boxes, drainage boxes. They took those away. So I think that's important to get these people in the, in the fold. So it'd be good to I think try to reach out to a bunch of different people if we're gonna actually make this all happen. Okay. All right. That's my but they take them away because SDOT is not hand out enough cash to get the project right. Right. It's a it's a it's a funding it's a funding issue. That's really what the issue is. Okay, so um, we should probably the, the four of us should probably um, convene very briefly after this meeting just to say what's our how are we mapping out the next month. And, and, you know, I know you're very busy planting, Rob, so your work could be narrow for next year. Narrow, no, I guess I wouldn't even know it without some in, input, I think, possibly from, from Dave yeah. or, or from this person that we know. It's hard for me to, um, hard for me to work on a little guidance. Yeah, but then there's also the traditional plantings. Right. All the around. Traditional plantings. No. We can work on. Yes. Okay, I'm going to move us on if that's all right. Um, all right, and this is Rob. You're you're up to talk about the neighborhood planting project in Orchard Street. Okay, there are some progress. Um, so the stakes are in the ground. Uh, 18 stakes, um, all in the tree belt with no overhead wire. Uh, we have stock set aside for uh, 12. On gold ginkgo and uh, three, uh, three close at the end um, lindens and, uh, and one underwire for what is a wire going to a house that's standard so that's uh, so we have 16, 16 of the 18 trees I think which is pretty good. Um, we might come up with a couple more. Maybe not. So, uh, I had a little trouble getting together with uh, Shoshana, who's representing the group, but um, Alicia and I are meeting with her tomorrow. So that should be good. We can actually, with the stakes in the ground, talk about the tree, its location, its species. I haven't heard, if that meeting will also find out about what the level of volunteers is. I have no idea what, uh, what, what they have. But uh, on a s normal Saturday, uh, we've been able to plant 10, 12 trees without yeah. uh, neighborhood support. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, so provided the bridge is going to come, which he will. <laughs> which he will. Uh, it sounds like. Uh, I'm going to be there. Paige is going to be there. Yeah, yeah. So we're we'll get the trees planted. We have the trees, um, and uh, I just Trishana said that there were some mistakes that she wanted to see moved. The states will move again when um, the state comes through. It's, it's a very condensed, tight neighborhood, so every, you know, the houses aren't that far apart, so there's a lot of gas and water on the side, so I'm concerned. Uh, 
I haven't, I haven't gotten any negative phone calls, so that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I want to actually, in the next segment, uh, talk Just about the phone calls. So yeah. Okay. That's it for that. Okay. Um, I, um, so I would, um, I would love to put Shoshana through the online application process. I don't know if that's going to have to be for Karen's. So Karen was out sick for almost a week. So she's behind. So I sent you that email. She's trying to get to it. Okay. All right. So it's what it is, but it would be, I mean, it's, it's part of the process. It would be ideal. Um, and then the other question is, do I want to put out a press release about this? Because it is the launch of a new program yeah, for us. I think you should. I, think you should. I don't, I, it doesn't make sense to do it until this, until the application is live, though. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. I just think that that's, that there's a, uh, you got to give the public something to go to. Like to say, oh, and you too could could um, participate in this and take a look at this website. So um, maybe maybe I'll hold off until. Well, so once you you want to just write it, you want to just yeah. you want to write it so we can just vet it, and then mm -hmm. I'll touch base with Karen on Friday morning, okay. see where she's at with it. Okay. I think the issue is, is that the way that Civic Plus works is that that particular. Uh, so that she has to build it such so when people enter the information, the information actually just imagine this an Excel spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. The information goes through mm -hmm. Civic Plus and lands on an Excel spreadsheet. So she's working on getting that link correct. It's, um, Civic Plus, unfortunately, sometimes it's not the easiest uh, platform to work with, mm -hmm. which we have found. So mm -hmm. it's a little bit of a challenge. And is the city is the city strongly against using Google's Google platform? That's correct. Oh, we use okay. our website. Okay. I just thought about a temporary measure because yeah. I've created it. It's, it exists. It's ready to go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But not. Well, okay. Could, could you just post a PDF of it on the people to still Is that not working? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a whole bunch of drop down choices. Oh. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I will. Um, I will draft something. We'll make it happen. And I'll mention the the online application. Um. And I think it would be nice if we keep Ken Lee Nyman updated. He's the gentleman who came to the, he took his evening last mm -hmm. week or two weeks ago and came to our meeting. Prospect. Prospect Street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Along the way. Okay. So, uh, Rich, you around the next? Uh, yeah, I think so. Go ahead. Uh, so, something that I know you've experienced and that Rich and I spend a lot of time on, a lot of time, is Anytime we lay out more than three trees, some place that haven't been requested, just the trees out there, so we get a lot of pushback. So you were on uh, Chestnut Street. Mm -hmm. We only stake three trees on that street. But it's a big, wide tree belt. Two people of the three had very strenuous objections. And the, the issue is that it, 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 it really follows up the works because since the tree is delivered, the people are there, they're trying to plant the tree, and they're, they're, there's, you were there, you probably handled it well, but you never... We you didn't know. interact with the gentleman. Well, he left, he left a sign. Oh, okay. Well, you never know how the interact, you know, it just creates, it, and, and I think that um, some of the people that I plant with who have experienced this over and over again have wondered if we shouldn't leave a uh, note in each house what we plant. Um, there's a downside to that because it then I think it's the idea that feedback or, or, or you know feedback's a, well, an option. You know, right, you, right. You, you have a choice. You, the note could say the city owns the tree belt. We we don't care what you think. I mean, I'm just kidding. You know, Rich is shaking. If there was, or at a minimum, perhaps. Yeah. No. Uh, another idea. I'm just throwing out ideas. Yeah. Another idea would be to um, print out a very just a paragraph that people. Like we like around planting or or, or mm -hmm. I could just hand you and say, look, this is a decision made by the tree board and he works for the mayor. Uh, you can call, email him after the tree's planted. Mm -hmm. I, I don't mm -hmm. <laughs> after the tree. You know, we're we're interested to hear your feedback, mm -hmm. but right now these people have to plant the tree because that's what they're out there doing. I like the idea of a little note after the planting, make it positive. Well, well, I would say after the planting, people ask for it. In other words, we're not going to go put it everywhere. Have something. Well, to ad lib each experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's taxing. 
It's taxes. Yeah. yeah, because it happens. I mean, when every time I go out, I know yeah. that that day someone. Now, today we planted five trees. Three were requested. So, actually, four were requested to cut down the likelihood that someone was going And we planted the other two today. But one of them was a tree that we'd already put in place and had to remove and go back again. So it just. And I actually kind of expected that James Street to come out. Mm -hmm. One that they did it's a big trait with a huge roof off. That's not moving. What is happening on Chestnut Street? Mm -hmm. What it's, is happening? I, I have to reach out to that gentleman. I have not. I've been in class for the last few days, and I have more class day tomorrow, so I won't be able to get out there. Well, it's, it's 58 and 70. Number 58 is oh, where it's near where the guy wanted to use a bucket truck. And 70, we only have one tree. Yep. So one of them has to. So if you go to one of them, I say we can plant two of them. We don't we just don't have a second tree. I don't know. I'll be honest with you. I'm for that one that one tree on Longfellow. It's a whole other story, which I'm not sure with any of you, and I don't want to. It's a long story. But it's just similar. But it's point. very similar, and I actually ended up I mean, it was to the point where I just said, look, it, I'm the tree warden. Public right of way is under the tree warden's domain. I can plant trees wherever I like. This program is supported by the mayor and the city council. We are flying through on this initiative. If you have an issue, you need to contact the mayor's office, period. And, you know, it just, you know, the woman just couldn't understand, the resident couldn't understand why we want to plant a tree in that particular place when there's so many other trees everywhere. And I said, well, does you have a street that's full of ash trees? In five years, they're going to be dead. Well, she wants to just wait till they're all dead. Oh, well, yeah, no, yeah. We're, we're not doing that. We're actually trying to be proactive and trying to replace these trees. Rich heard all this. I've heard all this. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, so I, I, my only, it's not that I don't want to give residents the ability to uh, have their say, I guess, but it, in a sense, it's, it's, if I listened to every resident that said they didn't want a tree, then we would be minus probably about 50 trees. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I just, that's just not how I operate. It's, you know, it's like, it's like do it now and ask for forgiveness later. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of been my mm -hmm. philosophy. Well, what about the idea then of freaking up something when people really object? That that, that, that I that I would agree with because then it actually gives them uh, my phone number, some yeah. contact info. And the mayor. And the mayor, you know, the mayor is. Yeah, I don't want it to go to the mayor's office. Right. I'd rather right. try to defuse it myself. Whatever. You, that's yeah. the point. Whatever you. Yep. That, because when we're at living. Because you didn't actually meet the person. Yeah. Sometimes they're out there. Sometimes oh, yeah. we've already right. dug the hole. Yeah, no, I've dealt well, over the years I've dealt with people. Rich has had the experience of having dug the hole and the person standing in the yeah. hole. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I'm just gonna weigh in for a second. Um, I love that this city doesn't engage in this level of conversation with citizens and that we honor that the public that the that the what we consider the tree belt is a tree belt it's public property it's for the public benefit it's not for the sole benefit of the direct abutter um, so i support in theory us maintaining that if if we have gone through the process of determining that that a good that a, there's a site suitable for a tree that site is going to have a tree having said that i love the suggestion of having um, a ready-made paragraph to pass on to people and, and really shape it in positive light, reminding them of all the benefits of the tree um, mm -hmm. and giving them Rich's contact. And um, Sarah, who was planting with us um, last weekend, made the suggestion of having a little tag on the tree that says, hey, you know, this tree was lovingly planted by volunteers. Um, it's a city tree. It's protected under Mass General Law 87. Um, no, no one may harm or remove this tree without a public shade tree hearing, you know, or, or without the consent of the, the, the tree warden, whatever, we can work on the language. But I like the idea of, of letting people know that that tree is a protected tree because I think there is the risk of um, the tree being damaged by an irate neighbor. I mean, I don't know if it's happened, but it's definitely happened in other municipalities. Um, and I also think it's just good messaging, you know, just like, why not? give a little bit more advertisement to the good works we're doing when someone passes by one of our trees. Do you think it would be worth um, making a card about this size with all that and um, placing it in someone's, tucking it in their door or their mailbox for every planting? I was thinking of laminating something like this and attaching it to maybe so the, like the grow bag, I mean the water bag yeah. or something we like that. We use the same kind of uh, size card material that we have already for our 
you know, this tree, mm -hmm. it's hard to see this tree yeah. needs water. Yeah. This is, I think, around two separate things. One, a paragraph to hand people that object. Yeah. And another, something to lean on the tree. Yeah, I understand these two things. Right, right. I yeah. just want to make sure. Yeah, I don't think that we need to, if, if someone's not objecting, I don't feel the need right. to put anything special into because frankly, that neighbor is has no more of a special relationship with that tree than anyone else. It's a public shade tree, that's kind of the whole point. So, um, uh, but I, I do think we should get in front of this because it, it sounds like it's, it's a regular thing. Yeah. Well, the, the, well, as we move around in places that are not accustomed to us being there, as we grow out of the Places we yeah. places we work that are for better terms easy picking in a sense because people want trees. You know we are now going to places where one person would request one tree and like well you know there's two other we should you know put another tree there so there's a pair or put four there and then we just move on and that's when we seem to get a little bit of discourse with some people. But I, I think that would be good to actually put those on all the trees. Um, you can even make the card actually probably should to save time and effort utilize that card in the same case. If you have any questions about this tree, this tree is protected public shade, please contact the tree board. Thank you very much. Use the same card. Don't, don't make two different okay. ones. Okay. Is there any chance we could put, like we have on the, the free tree to at home, like these volunteers participate in planting these trees? I mean, so let's let's um, have, have someone volunteer to, to draft this. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Okay, there we go. And if anyone has suggestions on language, let's send it to, to Maryland. So something about the size. Yes. Yeah. And anyway, it'll be laminated with a um, Yeah, it wouldn't be it's gonna be a mountain. Kind of yeah, it's high. not laminated, it's another printing process. I remember the name okay. but they're they you can't destroy another site on fire. Okay. okay. Does that work for everybody? Yeah. Good. Another question, the Franklin uh gentleman from Montague got in touch today with Tree North Hampton and that is their biggest concern is how to manage mm -hmm. objections to all the trees. And you know, different municipalities handle it different ways. In Cambridge, there's an ordinance that says that you cannot plant a public shade tree in front of a property without the consent of that property mm -hmm. owner. I'm, I'm, I'm just like, I would never want to deal with that. That's what Dave Lovecourt yep. deals with. Yep. So it really varies, um, but I much prefer our Community. Actually, we want to keep promoting all the positives of trees, and so that's why the messaging is very important. The, you know, the press release I'll put out, and maybe maybe it's time to write another op-ed piece about you know the benefits of trees. But um, but I want to preserve the right to plant public shade trees and public property. Well, that's clear what the law says. I don't, I don't see how. I don't, I don't see how other communities can use CERP in GL Chapter 87. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of strange to me. And every law department seems to look things a little differently. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, Dave Lefkowitz also told me that he said that their law department in Cambridge has determined that it's up to the tree board as to whether or not he will allow someone to actually request a public shade tree. Mm -hmm. That's not how the law reads. So it's interesting, but different, yeah. different concepts just to give you a different view. So. so I just want to point out one last thing about this choice of you know, not one of the trees. Is the, the, the problem, you know, when you're on the ground is that if you, if people, if somebody doesn't want a tree and, and they are uh, managed to like fend off the tree, it creates a huge problem because it, it then allows everyone else on the block in the whole neighborhood of the town to think right. they can do it. So. It makes a situation where we kind of have to take a very hard line because if you don't, it opens can of worms. And, and I feel bad about that because it would be, be nice to feel my, 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 my initial personal uh, take on things is kind of be flexible and be like, you know, what, what can we work out here? But but it, it, the news travels fast and people have come to me and said, well, wait a minute, I saw back there there was, a you know, you skipped the tree in front of a house. Mm -hmm. Which is sometimes we don't have to stop or whatever. People notice all that stuff. Yeah. At the end of our planting season, might it be worth putting an article in the Gazette and just share what we've done this year and say a little bit about this? Mm -hmm. I think that would be fine. people are wondering. I think any kind of press would be, would be good. I mean, I think, I think Rob's hit all the points on the difficulty. He is correct. Once you actually open the door to someone, 
that becomes a problem. I ran into this problem on the corner of Hillcrest and Bridge Road. This lady did, I want these trees, and she was not very polite about it, and I went and dealt with her and I said, ma'am, I'm sorry, that's the public right away, and I'm the tree board, we will have trees here. And well, I don't want them, I'm like, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I support you, Rich. So it can be uh, testy at times. Yeah, yeah. But five, 305 Bridge Road, Wants a free now, you know that. Yes, the gentleman who we struggle with. Yes, yeah, that's the other thing is you yeah. can you can win the motion. He changed his mind. What did you do when somebody was standing on the board? He walked up to me and said, I told her, Where's my was Very polite, over the phone, and I said, You need to back away. If you do not back away, I'm going to call the police department. You're obstructing me, my, my work, and I have the right to work in front of your house. This is the phone right away. Wow. Okay, so I think we've right. got some, we got some clarity idea. on where we're going with that. I'm glad that we're going to try that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and you know, if um, as soon as you give us the, the thumbs up to go back and plant the tree at 70 Chestnut Street, yep. we're happy to do that. Um, I think our biggest the, the thing that threw us off the most was that the water line seemed to go straight through the the spot. And and do you sometimes plant on water? Oh no, we just no. move it over. Oh, okay. I tried to send a message to you too that you have to check the, the markings and possibly okay. move. You said okay yeah. though, right? Yeah. Two yeah. Okays. Okay, so that's that's good to know right. that uh, we should, n even if it says okay really clearly, we should not. We should still use our own judgment. And if yeah. we see well, a line going through, okay. Well, well yeah. I tried to call Rich. Should I have called you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And all right. Uh, I didn't. I didn't know you guys were. Well, on I would normally pick up, but I was the guy who was asleep. I'm so glad. <laughs> yeah, leave me a second. Yeah, yeah. Right. No, mostly, you just mostly we go by after the okay. second look. Okay. But, but I was. I went away that week. That's why I wasn't around. Right. That's why I didn't right. 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 Okay. So, so the message was, yeah, you're gonna have to. Was, look. You're gonna have to look. Okay. Move, look and see, and then we move it one way or the other. Okay. We don't put them in front of front doors if possible. Yeah, and there's some other things. Just look at driveways and yeah. How far off the water line would we have to move it? Three feet. Three feet. Okay. All right. Well, that I mean, in that room. case, I would love for you to evaluate and restake that spot because yeah. there was one large tree that if yeah. we moved, went that way, we would have been coming Close up against his roofs, yeah. and then the other was just much closer to his driveway. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so you might say four feet if you have room, but in that case, when it's tight. Yeah, it depends upon what, what size tree it is because in the tree belt is typically where the uh, uh, curb stop is for the water shut off. So we've actually done a couple of removals recently of some very large trees that the curb stop is actually in the tree trunk. Oh really? So that's not good. So we got so that's why it's just important to check. What do you think three feet for a yeah. pretty big tree? I think it would probably be fine. Yeah. But and, but further you have plenty of space and it's important. Yeah, yeah. But you don't we, it's it was a little there. tight there. So just just to wrap this this little section up for Rob and I Rob Leach and I are meeting on Friday to go over the setback plantings and to reevaluate the existing stock that we have versus the rest of the planting season. Um, I set up an account with uh, Chestnut Ridge Tree Farm in, uh, outside of Buffalo, New York to get the bare root trees. Mm -hmm. We may have to add to that order to get some other tree stock that was requested by setback folks. I met with uh, Lori Sanders from Historic Northampton to go over the planting front of uh, historic Northampton okay. and she gave us a thumbs up and okay. said thank you very much so um, and I got one more tree one more resident wants a tree on Bridge Street at the very end so I'll talk to you about oh, that. Oh the one who you met last night? Yes right. I forgot her name but uh, so, yeah. I heard. Yeah. So I think the, the bear roots that were fairly well prepared to plant bear root trees but we are going to have to like as a community figure out who's going to show up because it's short enough. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so we do have that, especially as we add more. You know, we already are up to 25. Yes. So as we go over 25, we're going to need, you know, 20, 15 people to come out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, let's. Um, I, I'm going to suggest that okay. that um, we discuss that a little more under the Tree Northampton update mm -hmm. because that's a volunteer yep. um, section. Um, I do. I am aware that we're we're. So is this. Very quick question. Okay, when you say move it over four feet from the water line, do you mean the center of the hole four feet over, or that the edge of the hole should be four feet from the water line? The center is fine. Unless it's less it's giant oak or something. Okay. Good. All right. Um, the next the next two items I wanted to keep very briefly, I'm, I'm abbreviating them because of um, jamming in another agenda item. 
So the volcano mulching, um, you know, I just want to make sure that we are, we're continuing to move along with that in some way or another. I think the ball is in your court, and I know you have other things. And I had said that um, until we get this application done, we can come back on I think I think we have to we have to develop some kind of a campaign message of some sort. I think we have to work on it through the winter months okay. and actually produce something for the spring because that's when you know, yeah. the mulching happens. The mulching doesn't really happen now. So in order to get a contractor to come and take the mulch away, which I, I prefer them to take the mulch away, period, and not have us do it because it's just, I don't have the manpower at the moment. So, but I think it's something that we need to craft some kind of campaign message of some sort right. or some kind of public And outreach. did you not feel that the, the um, morphing that I did of that one flyer that we created was? I, I don't really have an issue with it. Um, the only thing is is that I, I think the, the way that we deliver it is what, what we may have to try to do through it. Instead of just showing up one day and sticking, you know, you're killing this tree and then we we'll, we'll drive away with my name on it. You know, <laughs> you know, Lily told me to say it's not. Right. I, uh, I think it would be best to try to, like I've done with Cole Vest, is I try to educate them and then when they back to put the mulch back, I sent them another email with a bunch of pictures with our information about volcano mulch and some information from DCR. I have not heard back from them and the mulch hasn't been moved, but I think we have to. Yeah, I mean, no. I think we're looking at a broad campaign yes. versus that's very targeted and time consuming. Yeah, so that's is. the thing I'm trying to weigh. Right. So anyway, okay, so let's table that to winter. We won't go too much into it. But um, I, I, I happen to be ashamed. So. It, well, it, 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 it is to a certain degree, but you have to remember that I am a public official, so we have to be very careful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think people lash out when they're embarrassed. Yeah, I'm not, I don't, okay. So we can we can figure out what that means and how. Uh, I, it, uh, yeah, I don't want to. I think I think it's, there's a balance point. I think that that there can be a certain amount of of raising the issue without. And you're not with it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So to I'm be the to be continued. Mm -hmm. um, Molly Molly mentioned mulch madness. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right, and tree speak. So Madeline has sent you abbreviated stuff, so that's another thing that we're just plugging along with. Yep. Do you have anything to report on that? No. Karen is working on that. Karen's working on that. Okay. Karen's a little overloaded at the moment. I apologize, but it's just the way it is. Yeah. Okay. We're looking at All right, well, there's been a lot of plantings going on. Thanks, mm -hmm. you commissioners, for going out on Sundays. Um, we continue to plant. I kind of queued up a picture of our Smith people. I can pass around. Oh, yeah, group that's like more or less. Like six students from Smith? Great, yeah. 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 Yellow yeah. trees look great. Yeah. great. Yeah. So that was really good. And then we had another student last weekend. And um, planting continues. You know, Rob is much more in the center of it because of my full-time work. Um, but I continue to be messaging out to volunteers, getting them signed up, and getting them on board to to volunteer. Did, does everybody get the emails? For I mean, you folks are all mm -hmm. set. But um, for okay. if you don't get yeah, for volunteer recruiting that you can forward out to someone else. Mm -hmm. You can keep sending them to us. And okay. Them, even though we're, we're trying to take you out of the list each time, but no, it's easier. Can always you can it all on to I haven't gotten any emails. Yet. I'll send. I get to check the emails tonight and see how many more we need. And probably send out one more for the weekend to accommodate whatever trees we're going to be planting this weekend. Forwarding on works. I mean, we. Yeah. You didn't send an email to Smith. It's six Smith students. Mm -hmm. There's an ecology mm -hmm. forum at Smith, or environmental forum, and two separate Smith staff people, faculty, put our opportunity on that forum. So we did, weren't getting students from one club or assigned from a class. It's it's just students who care about the environment and want to come. I put them in a group because we need. It's, a, it's extremely challenging to have people who haven't done it before, and especially when you have more than one person who hasn't done it before. Mm -hmm. 
So we did it in a very formal way and um, had a training in the beginning, et cetera. Um, normally when there's just one or two good people, we integrate them in with another partner and plant the trees and it's less formal. So um, we continue to get volunteers and people are continuing to be um, returning to volunteer, which is absolutely the most valuable to us mm -hmm. because again, having to explain what we're doing throughout really takes a lot more out of us and it slows us down. Mm -hmm. So um, Yeah, and our group has grown to five now. The person you passed on to us was is great. So she could only do something. She can only do Sunday mornings, but she's a great member of our team. Good. We're happy to have. That's her. terrific. And um, what is the final? What are, where are we? What's the number? Where are we? Uh, after Orchard Street, we will plant the nine trees. So um, for the fall. For the fall. Mm -hmm. So that's good because we're we're the minimum one hundred and thirty. So we've got forty more a month. So that we're we're ahead of the pace, but weather and cold. So it's good to be ahead. So I think right now we now plan to uh, about six months. About six And um, I haven't heard at all from Orchard Street how many volunteers she has, so I have to really have you asked? Her. Well, I'm um, meeting her tomorrow. So okay, if you can find um, out. Could you ask her? Because right? I've recruited a couple people. I asked her to keep me posted as she recruits, and I haven't heard. <laughs> But um, we'll see. Well, um, maybe she hasn't found anyone. I don't know. <laughs> if so, I mean, we have, I have a list of six here off the top of my head, um, and from what you said. So hopefully, you know, if we're going to have 16, you think, trees? 18, yeah. Well, we have 18, 18 states, states, but only, only 16 trees. Mm -hmm. So just put so the, the number of trees in context, we planted almost 130 in the spring. We kind of hit for around 250. Mm -hmm. We just planted 60, so we're, mm -hmm. we're you know, up around 200. In a year. Yeah, and, and we have 25 of our root trees in. Yeah. So we had the root trees in. Yeah. Um, Did you that, want to mention the bare because I I punted that to, to now, like yeah. the the volunteer organizing around here. Yeah, it's extremely challenging because if we don't know exactly when they're coming, um, it's very hard for people to put time aside in their schedules. So we're going to need people kind of on call. Um, I think I, I maybe a separate email to people and open up the time. So I think some of us who are leaders should try and set aside time so we can with people at all, but additionally to the three normal times. Because right now we have Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday in the morning. We may not be able to plant 30 trees in those three time slots because we don't have the sufficient mm -hmm. uh, leaders to really make sure it's done right. Mm -hmm. So I think we should be talking to leaders about other times they might be available during the Mm -hmm. Well, I'm wondering if our group, because I remember that planting bare root trees takes a lot less time because you're not digging as big of a pit. Well, the, 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 the tree bag trees you're getting are kind of similar. Not that different. Not that different. Yeah. Um, my point being that it's possible that on a Sunday morning, if we're doing bare root trees, we could do three or four. Yeah. Uh, instead of just two. Yeah. Right. Leadership is definitely the most difficult part because we have rich. Jen has been coming out. You've been leading a group, Rob, and we're gradually getting um, gentleman named Kent is able to be pretty much on his own with with um, a volunteer who's experienced another experienced volunteer, and they'll come get us for the ball. Rob um, R. Rob R. is getting there as well. But Orchard Street, for instance, we have a lot of people. It's. Gonna, we're going to really have to plan ahead in terms of making sure that as the trees go in the ground that somebody's really supervising each one, mm -hmm. that the root balls are, are trimmed and... Yeah, one of the biggest things, the biggest problem that I see in all this planting with volunteers is volunteers don't make the holes big enough. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that I, that I struggle with. I mean, volunteers get the, con they do very well, they get the concept, but you really have to pay attention to the size of the hole and the depth of the hole because people will just dig like you know tomorrow and all of a sudden the hole's like too big, too deep after this problem. 
the whole point is to you know plant high. It's funny. Plant, 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 it's it's plant, it's plant high or die. So you know, it's it, you got to have the flare above the ground. But the holes are getting bigger. They are getting See, bigger. I, I've been working on them as I've been working well, with different folks. So. Well, there was one. We had to rule one and a half times. We yeah. brought to two times. Yeah. Then, and so two it's times. Just, yeah, yeah, they should be twice the size, and the hole actually should kind of roll in if you can do it. But obviously, we're planting in places we can't do that, so we have to. But I think it's important because people just want to like shoe shoe box the thing in there, you know, mm -hmm. and it just doesn't. Then once you get the tree in there and you have to maneuver it, you can't do it. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, that's that's. You don't want to fill them back in because then the trees are going to sink too low. Mm -hmm. So, at that critical point, we really want the trees to thrive. We need these leaders, and. Um, to really, that's definitely more difficult than finding people who are willing to just come on out and help. Right. Um, really different. So that is continues to be a challenge, and um, we'll be for working through it. So we we'll want to communicate really well in advance to know about the volunteers. And it's just planting. Yeah, planting and, planting. You, and you got the message that we're going to be off next. So this coming Sunday, you're not planting. Yeah. So we'll leave. We don't want to have trees delivered. Right. Okay. And on to any other business. Any other business not anticipated by moi? Yeah. Okay. I'm wondering how things are going with filling the big commissioner. I have. Sue's application has been put in. I don't know if it's going in front of council. I was contacted by um, Council of Arch, and she asked me for two paragraphs, and I sent them, and she said they were excellent. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I haven't heard back from her. That was um, oh, a week and a day ago I sent them to her. I sent it right away when she asked. So Good. That's good to know. Um, Rich and I went to the meeting last night, the downtown Oh, yes. Meeting. Thank you. Yes. Um, Can you report on that? Yes. Um, at Whitford, um, this group, Dotson and Flinker, was kind of running it. And they delineated this core area of downtown. It's uh, the main part of Main Street, part of Pleasant Street, and then King Street, wide down, pretty far. Um, and um, we did. We had two little groups where we, well, first of all, they gave a presentation and they showed different options for buildings, that, you know, height of buildings and what do we think about 30 feet versus 70 feet and considering the narrowness of the streets. And we all kind of talked about that and then we broke into two groups and each group had sticky notes that they put on a map for things that they liked and things that they didn't like about downtown Northampton and stuck them up on the map. And we talked about all those things, and then um, then they sort of tried to target in on opportunity where spots and their opportunities to do things. So that was sort of the gist of it. And we did each of us. We were in different groups, and so we each mentioned trees. You know, we need more trees on Main Street. And, um, not not wanting the really high buildings on the narrow streets because it's too shady. So they are they more or less going back to zero in terms of envisioning design plans or have they have they are have they narrowed down to their widening the well it sounds like this is more of a um a quick pace thing what they're doing today and things that would be what they did last night are things that we implemented quicker than the overhaul of main street they said that was more of a long-term thing that that's also happening but this is happening Quicker. I'm not totally clear on how they sync together, you know, what we like what comes out of the short term thing and what's gonna happen if when the long term plan is made, so they're all the, gonna fit together. I, I think you know what I took away from that meeting is this is really more about actual um, zoning, changing the zoning the zoning of the central business district and the two outlying areas going down King Street and down Pleasant Street. Um, in relation to the existing structures that are there, um, the, the historical significance of the structures, how tall they are, what they look like, how close they are to the road. Um, they asked a bunch of questions about, you know, what folks would like to see in the sense of, uh, you know, what, 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 
they want the core of downtown to look like because downtown will change because the street is going to be narrower. Um, most people said leave the existing buildings the way they are, don't add any, um, it's not like I guess you call it a setback, but you know, they were thinking about adding stories to some of the buildings so people can actually go up. It was one of the biggest pushes to actually have more affordable uh, units for people to live downtown and that's becoming a struggle. Um, the other big questions were what, you know, leading into the city were people willing to actually uh, increase the height of the buildings actually um, or change the way that the, you know, change the way that the buildings look um, as they were drawn into the center of the campus. Outside of the core or, or historic the core, area. The core historic area. Okay. So the core historic area is going to basically, I, from what I gather, it was everyone wanted it to stay the same. But people were willing to actually change, I guess for a better term, words, the hodgepodge that we have as you're coming into town. Some people were not. Some people like the old buildings, uh, some of the singular homes that are left at the end of Pleasant Street before they come into town. Um, so it's so they're basically going to take all the information they gather and come back with some kind of a report. But I, it did. They touched a little bit on green space and green infrastructure, but it wasn't right. as much as I had anticipated. Okay. They sort of had this model of, of sidewalks, like a cross section. If you're looking down a down a sidewalk, there's the main part, which they call it the, the throughway part, where people walk. Then there's the part right next to the shops that's like a, where doors open and it's under awnings. It's more like a, that zone. And then the next zone out toward the street is the, um, so there's that the shop zone, then the throughway. Then the next one is what they call the furniture zone. And that's where the trees and the benches go. And then there's the curb zone. And so I guess those different strips can vary in width depending on the exact plan. Of I see. So it is determined that Main Street will expand its those pedestrian zones and and shrink the street rather than take and put an island through the middle. They didn't talk about that at all. That I think that's part of that long range planning. Um, you know, the idea was also brought up about safer bike lanes. You know, somewhere protected from cars. So who knows how that's all going to work? Out. Okay. And did you go to the King Street one too, Rich? No. Oh, you didn't go. No, because I was there. I went to the Mastery Woods and Foresters. Yeah. Oh, okay. And all right. Got there to so. later. So that was on the old one. So okay. Not good enough. And I, I had called up and couldn't go to the King Street one. Looking at the maps, what you said about and what Rich said about engineering seems to be the main thrust of it. Um, I don't know if there's any way to put a word in after the fact. I emailed and asked you about that to get feedback yeah, about the trees. Yeah, and I said contact DOT because I, you know, it's all a state. It's a state. Yeah, I looked through the website and I couldn't mm -hmm. find a place mm -hmm. okay. to Yeah, I don't contact. know if there's a contact person. Oh, wait. Yeah. Yeah. Just contact the planning department. Yeah. Like, so, yeah, I don't care about trees. Did anyone zoom in on those maps? Because when I zoomed in on those plans, it looked to me like that there was an island, a strip separating the yeah. bike lane for, for a small amount. But with potential trees on them. Yeah. Well, they had them in the design. Yeah. Just, just fluff. Okay. Yeah, it was, it's car oriented, even though they're talking about pedestrians and bikes, it seems like it's still yeah, mostly for moving. Yeah, the rough part about that cars. stretch, obviously, is the side that can accommodate the biggest trees is also the side of the lines. And the building the side that's already built up doesn't have the lines. So it's really that's cool. unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Are you in favor of an island <coughs> It's not down the center, it's a separate, it's a, it's just a, a it's short a distance for a separated bike path. Yeah. Huh. I'm on, on King Street. Yeah. yeah. Which are almost never place. I was just thinking about um, Main Street in Keene, New Hampshire. It used to have the claim, the claim to fame as the widest street, Main Street in the United States. And they, they redesigned it. So in addition to trees planted, um, to, to slow the traffic, they also have some of the um, islands coming out, and it's just—it's beautiful. There's plenty of ways to walk.
and there's trees and, and it's yeah and it's traffic calmed and, and and there's there's a strip down the whole middle yeah. of trees it's really transformative mm -hmm. yeah um, I would love for us mm -hmm. to consider that because we're never going to be able to shade the middle part of that street. Mm -hmm. all, there'll never be shade trees big enough to go over Main Street, mm -hmm. and that's the only way they ever do it. But I know that that's where snow gets put, and it's it's complicated. Right. All right. So I'm going to um, wrap things up here. The only thing that I wanted to say in the other business section is that Rich and I discussed the nine chest American chestnut trees that we're nursing in my backyard. Um, we thought about putting those in the Spring Grove Cemetery, right? Was that, was, am I saying it? Is it the Spring Grove? Um, I think the chestnut trees are always going to be um, well-sighted well in cemeteries and not uh, <laughs> as public shade trees because yeah. they're just so spiny. Yeah. Um, so that is probably um, you know, a project that we'll also add to the mix this fall, is planting those. But it can be separate. I don't think it needs to... Um, I don't think it needs to involve Tree Northampton. We could probably do it, you know, um, between the same people who did it before. Um, I mean Jay. It wasn't Jay. It was um, it was Rich, my daughter, um, Paige, and Todd. Well, so yeah, oh, we, yeah, yeah, Todd, we, Todd and Jay. So Jay and Rose. Oh right. And oh right. I forgot about this. Child. Yeah, but there's less of them this time. Well, I hope the Jay is still. Hey, Well, have you? Do you include him on him to, Yeah, he's on all the lists. But I'll specifically reach out to him for Orchard Street. Yeah, be, really, be, be Orchard be Street. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. he'd, he'd be welcome. To, I mean, I'm just trying to take the load off you guys. These are tiny little seedlings. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I agree. It was. Well, yeah, <laughs> I like that idea too. You knew the doctor snapped. Yeah. All right, so I think we're done, um, and we're on the to-do list section of the meeting. Who wants to start? I'll, I'll start by I'm going to draft, Molly and I are going to draft um, a tag for the trees, we'll have it for the next one. And I just, I got your email recently, uh, Rob, so I will put together the oh, yeah. master list of all the trees. Now that you've gone through. Yes. Okay. Actually, I can uh, at the meeting. We can go for it. Okay, yeah. Um, let's see. Well, I attended that meeting and I still haven't I still have to work on that list of um, gathering places. Yeah. Uh, if needed I'll meet with Rich on the permit language. And then also suggest some tweaks to the super entry or here in March. Uh, we're working with, I know soon I will work in the working space, but also we'll already start working on trying to figure out how to uh, plant bare trees um, in terms of this volunteer organization time. And I haven't been involved with volunteers. I've done a couple of them on my own. Right. I'm thinking less of the technical part and more about how we're going to have a like, flexible workforce so that if they show on call. up on, on Friday, we can have them all planted through, you know, through Monday, through Monday, Tuesday, whatever. Something else. It's not going to be on our schedule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This will include probably going to the parking bridge. Resources he can bring. What is it? <laughs> What's that? What am I doing now? I'm just, you know, for it. I'm oh. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm I mean, hoping that you and maybe someone like John can come, you know, be available that week. You know, so we can get some, like a, a water, you know, whatever. It's a lot of trees. What, right. bear root trees? Okay. Yeah. When we do the bear trees, yes. well, that, I think that was my, yeah. Well, and and Rob, you're also you and Marilyn are also going to be yeah. looking at the traditional, the 50 traditional planting sites for the DCR grant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can do the Okay, Sue. Okay, I think we need something like an emergency alert. The trees are here, kind of. 
Yeah. That would be fun like to, to, to receive. Oh. Um, I continue to um, keep the volunteers engaged in our fall planting. And that's really the focus right now. We have a lot. Can I make your list? Yeah, sure. Yay. <laughs> Rich, do you want to be up? Uh, no, but I will. Um, I got a chestnut. I got to work on the chestnut planting locations at the cemetery. Oh, good. So okay. Okay. Um, can I work with Todd on permit page? Going to continue to meet with Rob on Alicia on Friday to talk about tree stock, bare root plantings. Um, got to figure out if this meeting went to get together with a little sub community to talk about the project for the parking lot. Mm -hmm. trees mm -hmm. and everything else that I'm supposed to do. <laughs> okay. Yes. I know you always come out of these meetings feeling totally overwhelmed. I'm so sorry. All right, I'm going to mail this card to Jay. Um, I'm going to figure out next steps for the community forestry grant and um, map out a timeline for the next month. I am going to draft a press release for the neighborhood planting project. Um, I'm going to keep nudging Karen and Rich about online stuff. And I am. Uh, Maybe we'll try to figure out a date for the planting the chestnut trees. That's about it. Did, did all the chestnut trees survive? From nine. Nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. Oh, you mean the ones survived? Oh, I think they all survived oh, except for one got eaten by a turtle. What? Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. One got eaten turtle by a turtle. Oh, my God. I didn't get it. Yeah, got eaten by a stomach like, turtle. Yeah. Like chow. Right. And just decimated, but I think it's all the offering. ones at the um, cemetery are doing great. And I thought you were referring to the ones that Madeline propagated this year. Nine mm -hmm. out of ten propagated. So that's pretty good. Yeah, and they grow fast. Well, they're, they're yeah. It, it speaks to from my plant English. Yeah. Which we usually can also try. I know. Some yeah. Spaces. You know, metal, they have a metal fence around. So it's quicker and easier, and some stocks are hard to get. Yeah. Okay, motion to adjourn this meeting. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting is adjourned.